This video is going to be my Tony Awards predictions for Best Performance by a Leading Actor in a Musical. I have three things of note before I get into my predictions. One, I haven't seen everything. I've seen Back to the Future, Gutenberg, Harmony, Merrily We Roll Along, The Notebook, Water for Elephants, and The Outsiders. I've also seen The Great Gatsby in its pre-Broadway run, and I saw The Wiz in its pre-Broadway tour. The second thing of note is that not everything has opened yet. As of this recording, there are still eight musicals that haven't opened yet between now and the Tony Award cutoff of April 25th. And my third thing of note is that these are my predictions at this moment in time and they are likely to change after the reviews come out for those eight shows and discourse and reviews continue between now and the Tony nominations. The nominations are announced on April 30th and the Tonys are on June 16th and the reason that I'm making this predictions video having not seen everything is because the Tony Awards are one of my favorite things. So I'm going to be celebrating that by making this predictions video. Oh, another thing of note, I guess there was four total things of note, is that not all of the eligibility for these performers has been established yet. So for example, we don't know if the actors in The Notebook are going to be eligible in Leading Actor or Featured Actor. Okay, time to start the predictions. Right now, in my one and two slot, I have Jonathan Groff as number one in Merrily We Roll Along and Eddie Redmayne at number two in Cabaret. Just like the best musical revival category in and of itself is going to be a back and forth between Marilee and Cabaret, so is this category of leading actor in a musical for Jonathan vs. Eddie. The Marilee Tony campaign has been more of a long run campaign because it had a sold out run off Broadway last year with the same cast, incredibly critically acclaimed, and then it opened in the fall and extended and has been going strong critically and financially this whole Tony season with Jonathan Groff's lead performance heralding one of the reasons why this is such a critically acclaimed production. So this has been pretty much the front runner most of the season. However, this incoming cabaret revival coming in in the final month of eligibility in April that was acclaimed in the West End when Eddie Redmayne played the same role has been in the back of everybody's heads that this could be Eddie's year and not Jonathan's. And now that we're finally in these final weeks of okay, people are seeing cabaret previews. How are the reviews going to be? Is cabaret going to sweep both musical revival and leading actor in a musical? We'll see. This is going to be Jonathan's third Tony Award nomination. He was first nominated for Spring Awakening in 2007, and that was in lead. And then he was nominated again in 2016 and featured for Hamilton. So this will be his third nomination. And then if he wins, his first win. Eddie Redmayne has already been nominated and won at the Tony Awards. He previously won for Best Featured Actor in a Play in 2010 for the play Red. So this would be his first nomination in the musical categories. He's also been nominated for three Olivier Awards, which are the Tony Awards for West End Theatre. And he's won two Olivier Awards, one of them being for MC and Cabaret for the same role he's now playing this season on Broadway. So the argument being he won the Olivier for this exact role in 2022, so won't he win this year in 2024? I'll be going back and forth on who I think is winning, but since this is a nominations video, I'm just going to stick with Jonathan Groff and Eddie Redmayne are both getting in in this category for Merrily We Roll Along and Cabaret. Next, I'm going to move into two people who are season's Broadway performers who both starred in musicals that have since closed but I think could get into this category. We have Brian Darcy James in Days of Wine and Roses, and we have Chip Zion for Harmony. Brian Darcy James has been nominated for four Tonys, and he has never won. He's been nominated for his roles in Sweet Smell of Success, Shrek, Something Rotten, and Into the Woods he was nominated for just last season. He was in Days of Wine and Roses, which was a smaller show this season with a small cast, and it ended up having a short run. This one seemed to have pretty positive critical reviews, but in terms of word of mouth, it kind of had mixed word of mouth. However, it seemed that both critics and audiences both agreed that the main standout of the show were the two leading performances from Brian Darcy James and Kelly O'Hara. So on the one hand, if a show has closed by the time the Tony voting comes along for nominations and wins, shows that are still open tend to perform better at Tony nominations than shows that have since closed. However, given that the performances from Brian and Kelly were one of the biggest things that stood out about this production, and given that Brian and Kelly are such lauded performers in the Broadway community, I'm definitely keeping Brian in my top five for nominations, at least at this point. I think once I get into who's maybe in my fifth, sixth, and seventh slot, I'll discuss at what point I might take Brian out of my top five, but right now he's firmly in there despite being in a closed show. 
Next, I have Chip Zion, who starred in Harmony, which has since closed. I was shocked to see that Chip Zion has never been nominated for a Tony, despite performing on Broadway for decades. Chip Zion was the original Baker in Into the Woods, and he was the original Mendel in Falsettos. Harmony was a musical that closed early, and Chip Zion was the standout performance, since he's both the narrator of the story and the main character, looking back on his life. And he was also the emotional core of the show. So this nomination... I think seems less likely than Brian Darcy James because Harmony wasn't as critically acclaimed as Days of Wine and Roses. However, would the nominating committee take this opportunity to finally give Chip Zion a Tony nomination? Harmony is likely not getting very many, if any, Tony nominations, so this could be a place to award it. However, this is an incredibly crowded season for musicals, so I could easily see the nominating committee only going for one nomination from a closed show, going to Brian instead of Chip. Right now when I'm running through these, I'm going to put him right under Brian at number four, but I'll probably end up rearranging my predictions once I get through all the musicals in contention this season. So right now we have Jonathan, Eddie, Brian, and Chip. We have the two frontrunners from Revivals. We have two Broadway staples at this point in shows that have since closed. Next, I have two newcomers to Broadway making their Broadway debut. I have... Bertie Grant in The Outsiders, and I have Ali Lewis Borsky from The Who's Tommy. Starting with Brody, Brody is the lead in The Outsiders. He plays Pony Boy, and The Outsiders opened this week to mixed to positive reviews, I would say. However, in the reviews I was reading, it seemed that the focus was on the musical elements as a whole, not specifically calling out performances. There were definitely some reviews that highlighted the performers, including Brody Grant, but it didn't seem like they were specifically raving about the performance. They were mostly discussing what they did and didn't like about the musical as a whole. So I could see him getting in there at number five or number six. But now let's contrast his performance with another newcomer, Ali Lewis Borsky, who is playing the lead in The Who's Tommy. After just looking up more things about The Who's Tommy, I learned that Michael Cerverus, who originated the role of Tommy in 1993, for this production was nominated in featured actor not lead so i think i'm gonna scratch ali lewis borsky from this list and assume he's gonna go featured even though we haven't had an official eligibility ruling it seems like since the musical revival categories are mainly gonna be the cabaret vs. merrily show come tony night i'm thinking the who's tommy won't be winning a ton compared to those two shows however i could still see it yielding a significant amount of nominations even though those won't necessarily be converted to wins. Having not seen The Who's Tommy, I definitely need to read a little bit more about those reviews and what people are thinking regarding those nominations, but I'm going to take Borsky off of my leading actor predictions for now. And let's see, who should I talk about next? Or on the topic of musical revivals that will be nominated but not necessarily win on Tony Night, let's get into Gutenberg and Spamalot. Gutenberg, we have Andrew Rannells and Josh Gad. This was a limited run that I saw in the fall, and it was a musical comedy and Josh and Andrew were the only two people in the cast. When I saw this, I didn't really think it was a strong awards contender, maybe getting into musical revival, but I never really thought it was going to be a strong contender for getting nominated for Andrew or Josh, particularly since it's been closed since January. Andrew's been nominated for a Tony Award twice, once for the Book of Mormon and once for Falsettos, but he's never won. And Josh has been nominated once for the Book of Mormon. I think these two would have been a fun hosting duo for the Tony Awards, so hopefully they're presenting because their banter in Gutenberg was the highlight of the show. And looking forward to seeing Andrew this fall and Tammy Faye, but I don't see them getting nominated for their roles in Gutenberg. Next, I'll talk about Spamalot, which I think could get into musical revival but won't be getting any acting nominees. I'll get into Leslie Kritzer when I eventually do featured actress predictions. This show was originally on Broadway in 2005 and in leading actor it had two nominations for King Arthur and Sir Lancelot characters. So that would be James Monroe Iglehart and then for Lancelot, Taryn Killam opened the show with that role and then Alex Brightman closed it. I think if the nominating committee were to go for any acting awards, for Spamalot, it would be Leslie Kritzer and featured actress, not James Honor Iglehart for lead actor. Based on, it seemed like the most buzzy performance from this revival was Leslie's role. So I'm not putting James on my predictions list, but that's who's most likely eligible from this production. Okay, so next, should I talk about the fall shows that have closed or the spring shows that have yet to open? I guess I'll just caveat with, I don't think any of the other fall shows that have closed are going to be getting into this category. Those being Justin Guarini for Once Upon a One More Time. Oh, I saw that in DC before it came to Broadway. I forgot to say that at the beginning because I forget that that show 
happened. Actually, Justin Guarini's solos in Circus and Oops, I Did It Again were pretty fun in its pre-Broadway tryout, but he's not getting into this category. But his performance definitely surprised me in a good way. And then How to Dance in Ohio. I think the leads for this are either Caesar Samoya or Liam Pierce. But I don't think this will be getting any acting nominees. We have Here Lies Love. Would that be Jose Lana in lead? and Conrad Ricamora for featured or would Conrad be in lead okay I'll admit I'm not sure so we had the press release from the first eligibility meeting where it says for here lies love Ariel Jacobs will be considered lead and then scrolling to the bottom it says all other eligibility will be consistent with the opening night credits so then I go to the opening night credits for here lies love so by opening night credits do they mean the bold print so for this it would be Jose Lana and Conrad Ricamora both eligible for lead but then why did they need an eligibility meeting to say that Arielle Jacobs is lead if she's also in the bold print so if anyone has more insights on that please let me know because right now when the Tony eligibility articles say consistent with opening night credits do they mean the bold print or do they mean something else okay moving on to the new musicals for the spring let's get into Grant Gustin and Jeremy Jordan Grant Gustin for Water for Elephants and Jeremy Jordan for The Great Gatsby, both of which are leading men on Broadway right now that are likely driving ticket sales with their fan base. This is Grant Gustin's Broadway debut. He is famous from Glee and The Flash, and despite me not enjoying Water for Elephants, reviews were mostly positive for this show. When I saw it, I thought that Paul Alexander Nolan was the standout performance who would likely be considered featured. I think if this were to get in for acting for Water for Elephants, it would be Paul Alexander Nolan, not Grant. The thing with Grant and with Paul Alexander Nolan, I think it's going to come down to if Water for Elephants gets into Best Musical. Right now, it doesn't seem like there's a solid top five for getting into Best Musical. And for that reason, I think if Water for Elephants gets into Best Musical, we're going to have a higher chance of seeing Grant get in here, perhaps bumping out Brian, Chip, or Brody. So if we're seeing it's overperforming on nominations morning, Water for Elephants, such as getting into most of the categories and getting more than 10 nominations, then it could make sense for Grant to be here. That being said, the reviews are mostly praising the circus elements and the direction, not necessarily the performances. And so in some of these reviews, it seems like Grant's performance is serviceable, but not necessarily a standout. So I don't think serviceable is necessarily going to cut it for getting into this competitive category. But seeing how the committee likes Water for Elephants as a whole is going to factor into if he could get into that fifth slot. So in other words, say they're not as hot on the outsiders as we might think they are and Brody doesn't get in, then maybe that would be an opportunity for Grant to sweep in for that fifth slot. Moving into Jeremy Jordan, who would be the lead in The Great Gatsby. He's playing Jay Gatsby. Jeremy was previously nominated in 2012 for Newsies. He did not win. This show hasn't opened yet. It opens the last day of eligibility, which is April 25th. When I saw this in New Jersey in its pre-Broadway tryout, I remember thinking it was fun and being incredibly wowed by Jeremy's vocal. Is this going to be an awards player though? It seems like maybe just like Back to the Future isn't really going to be. Oh, I still need to talk about Back to the Future. Just like Back to the Future isn't really going to be an awards play and more so a fun tourist spectacle. I could see The Great Gatsby being in line with that as well. I remember thinking Jeremy's vocals were incredible, but was the acting incredible? Not necessarily, but an actor having strong vocals but not strong acting hasn't stopped the nominating committee for putting him in this category in the past. Would a role like Jeremy Jordan in The Great Gatsby bump out a Chip Zion? I'm intrigued how the reviews are going to be for The Great Gatsby because I've been hearing there's been some changes and work done since the pre-Broadway trial that I'm thinking will probably be structural. I'm leaning towards he's probably not getting in and this is probably not going to be an awards player except for potentially design. But I'm happy to be proven wrong and I'm eager to hear about what changes they did make. I think this is going to be more of a fun spectacle show, not necessarily awardsy. That being said, Jeremy was my favorite performer in the show, but I don't necessarily think that'll convert to a nomination here. But right now I'm leaving him off of my top five. Speaking of shows that are more spectacle-y, not so much awardsy, that reminds me I didn't talk about Back to the Future yet. That show opened over the summer and it's still open. I think Casey Likes is eligible in lead and Roger Bart is eligible in featured. Back to the Future won Best Musical in 2022 at the Olivier's. Roger Bart was not nominated at the Olivier's, but the actor who played Marty was nominated and 
Hugh Coles, who played George, was nominated. He plays the role on Broadway as well. I'm assuming that Back to the Future is only going to be nominated in the tech side of things for the Tonys, not for performances. The show received mixed to negative reviews. I don't think this is really going to be an awards player for performances, more so on the tech side of things. What shows haven't we talked about? These are the shows I still need to talk about. I still need to talk about The Notebook. Suffs has no men in the cast, so I'm going to skip Suffs. We have Hell's Kitchen. We have The Heart of Rock and Roll. We have Lampika. We have The Wiz. And we have Illinois. Okay, let's do The Notebook first. This one is hard to talk about because we don't have eligibility rulings for the performers in the show. When is that coming out? I'm assuming it's going to come out like the weekend before april 30th so the notebook has young noah middle noah and older noah so are they all going to be featured are they all going to be lead are some going to be lead and some featured i remember walking out of it i thought that middle noah could be lead and older noah and younger noah could be featured but then after reading reviews it seems like people are assuming older noah and older ellie would also be lead so would they do older and middle as lead and younger as featured i'd be happy to see either ryan vasquez or dorian harewood middle noah and older noah respectively one of them get in here but i hesitate to put anybody on here since we're not sure if they're lead in terms of personal taste i would definitely put at least one of the noahs in my top five but in terms of predicting what the nominators are actually going to do i could see neither of them getting in if they're in lead so maybe for this predictions list i'll just put the notebook dorian or ryan while acknowledging they might not be eligible if ryan or dorian were to get in it would be both of their first Tony nominations, but both of them have been on Broadway before. It's not their debut. Dorian's more of a narrator, whereas Ryan has a lot more stage time, particularly in Act 2. This is another one where it's hard to predict at this point what the tides are saying with the nominating committee, because since The Notebook isn't necessarily a lock for Best Musical, it's hard to say what acting nominations are going to come with it. So if The Notebook definitely gets into best musical but the outsiders doesn't ryan or dorian might get in there over brody and same with if days of wine and roses doesn't end up getting in that top five for best musical would that be less likely that brian gets in for these ones that are in contention for best musical not musical revival that could probably be said for all of these at this point since there isn't a clear front runner for who's winning best musical right now the notebook and the outsiders both opened to mixed reviews which makes it seem like neither of them are necessarily standouts but in a packed season with lots of new musicals open are they all just gonna get mixed mediocre reviews that's why i think with my predictions list i keep using the explanation that it's kind of a package deal with some of these if something gets in the best musical it's more likely to get in to that fourth or fifth leading actor spot so that's where we are with the notebook depending on if dorian or ryan is lead i could see them getting that fifth slot if the notebook comes with best musical and the outsiders doesn't but would dorian or ryan get in over brody i was more emotionally compelled by the performances in the notebook than the outsiders but what will the tony nominating committee think brody has more stage time than both dorian and ryan so many factors Okay, we're going to put a pin in that and move on to the new musicals that are going to be opening in the next two weeks. Moving into Lampika, I'm guessing Andrew Szymanski will be eligible for lead actor here, while George Abud will be eligible for featured. I'm doubtful Szymanski would get in here because I've mainly been hearing buzz about the women in the show, not the men. So I don't think Szymanski would be competitive here. Moving on to Hell's Kitchen. Brandon Victor Dixon is likely going to be eligible for lead actor. After reading a few Hell's Kitchen reviews from their off-Broadway run this past fall, it seems like Brandon Victor Dixon is more of the villain antagonist role and the main standouts are going to be Shoshana Bean and Malia Joy Moon. So I'm not putting Brandon Victor Dixon on this predictions list. We also have The Heart of Rock and Roll where we have Corey Cott as the lead actor. This show doesn't really seem like an awards play. It seems more on on the heartwarming fun side and in three to five years every high school will be performing the show so i'm not going to be putting Corey caught on my predictions we also have the whiz which will be competing in the musical revival category i think all the men are going to end up featured in this cast with nichelle lewis who plays dorothy as the sole performer that will be eligible in lead for lead actress so i think the men playing the wiz lion tin men and scarecrow would all be considered featured so i won't be putting anyone from the wiz in this predictions list and then we have illinois i know this is mainly a dance show but is there any singing looking at this closer it seems like we have the dancers and the vocalists 
We have Ben Tyler Cook in this from Newsies and Mean Girls and the West Side Story film. I'm going to assume this will not be competitive in the leading actor categories. This show is starting performances on April 24th and it's not having previews. It's just opening. I'm not as well versed on how the dance musicals have done in Tony Awards past, but I'm assuming this isn't going to be competitive in the acting categories. So I think that's all the musicals. Is that everything from my list? Oh, I guess... I'm looking at this list. One thing that I realized, is there any other actors in Cabaret that would be lead? Let me check. Okay, I don't think so. It seems like in the original production in 1998, we had one lead actor, one lead actress, one featured actor, one featured actress. Okay, I've talked about all the shows. I think I'm gonna do a last minute switch out for my final predictions at this point because I didn't realize Chip Zion didn't have a Tony nomination and I don't think Harmony is gonna get many, if any, Tony nominations and Harmony was not critically loved at all. As much as I want to go ahead and just predict six people getting in like last year, I think I'm gonna stick with making myself predict five. So when I first prepped these notes, I had my top five as Jonathan, Eddie, Brian, Ship, and Brody. And then after talking through all of this, I now am convinced that maybe one of the notebook men will get in, such as Dorian or Ryan. I'm gonna put Ali from the Who's Tommy into featured. Grant Gustin, Brandon Victor Dixon, Andrew Simonski, I don't think would be competitive. James Monroe, Igo Hurt, Andrew Rannells, Josh Gad, I don't think would get in. I kind of want to immediately do a deep dive into the past several years to see how many newcomers they welcome into this category versus people who are more solidified in the industry, such as Chip Zion. In such a crowded year, are they gonna go for Chip? I guess I'll stick with this. As we know, things are always changing. My final Tony nominee predictions will change once we know the eligibility for these people. Tell me in the comments who you're predicting for this category and happy two weeks until the Tony nominees and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.